Welcome back to another segment of Community Tapestry. And if you're just joining us, my name is Napoleon Bell. I'm the Executive Director with the City of Columbus Community Relations Commission. And we have Miss Tony T. It's good to be back. Good to be back for the second segment Thank of you. Community Tapestry. And uh, I tell you what, this, you know, with, with this next segment as a, as a good friend of the family, and uh, you he's, know, he's a friend of everybody's, everybody's family because <laughs> no, he's no, like family. No, I think worldwide, you know, and, and it reminds me of, you know, he's, he's written a book and, and it reminds me of going back to Georgia, you know, nice warm Georgia. Going back to Georgia. You know, <laughs> right, right. That, I know, we're, we're getting a little <laughs> off cue here, but you know, we're so excited about right. uh, this conversation that we're going to have with, uh, uh, well, let me just, let me just go ahead and introduce him. That's right. Let me just go ahead and That's introduce right. him. So. Our, our guest today, we have the Dr. Wilburn H. Weddington Sr. I'd like to welcome you to the program. Retired family physician and physician of everyone, I, I bet. And then next to him, we have Dr. Jessica A. Johnson, who, is, who has worked with him on the, you know, this, this book that we're going to be talking about, right? Yes. All right. Well, you know what? You know, it's, it's a pleasure to have both of you mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, I wish we had hours to, to, to speak here, but, but we don't. So we're going to get right into it. Um, so, Dr. Weddington, you know, you, you know in your book, and, and, and people might not know this, but you started off as a sharecropper, you know, and then became a doctor. You know, what was the life like being a sharecropper out there? Well, I think it provided me with a lot of spunk and determination to go forward from the Red Hills of Georgia, as a country boy, picking cotton, hoeing cotton, uh, doing the things that uh, was likely uh, part of my life, of most people's life, uh, especially uh, the Negroes or black Americans down in Georgia at that time. And uh, aspiration from the help of my family and through the trust in God to see me go forward to have the opportunity <clears throat> to receive an MD degree and to serve the communities around that area. <clears throat> wow, yeah, that's, that's really amazing because, you know, from picking cotton and sharecropping to become a doctor, you know, and you talk about family. I mean, was, was it was it your parents who, who, who instilled in you and says, hey, we really want you to become a doctor? Or was this something that she says, this is what I'm going to do? Well, I think it was inspiration from the community, from, from through God's spirit, through the Christian attitude that my family had, mm -hmm. uh, determination to do something to benefit the community, to benefit the lives of many people that were in my situation, and from the from the poorest uh, to try to elevate us and them to become servants, and, and servants by being servants, I mean servants to the community, to our lifestyle, to our people, to better prepare them for a better world, better life. We talk a lot about being academically prepared, and uh, Dr. Johnson as well as Dr. Weddington, I think the both of you can speak to that. Um, from your experiences, were, were you academic? I mean, I'm thinking of life as a sharecropper and what education must have been like, but apparently it must have been pretty good if you were academically prepared enough to go on to medical school. Well, I think that uh, through the blessings of God and uh, the determination of my family and uh, my relatives, my friends around me, uh, they saw that uh, uh, there was a spark in me and uh, they couldn't put it out, so they tried to help it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm glad they uh, I'm glad, glad they, they kept us right, right, right. No matter what they did, I'm going forward. Yeah, and how about you, Dr. Johnson? You have uh, quite a story of uh, becoming a PhD at a, at a quite a young age and uh, what it took for you to be academically prepared for those opportunities. 
Well, I like Dr. Weddington. Uh, family was a huge uh, support for me. Uh, my mother, Ethel H. Johnson, um, and I'm also from Georgia. <laughs> so um, I grew up uh, in a family where education was really valued. Um, most of my family members went to historically black colleges and universities. And for me, um, I think coming from an HBCU to Ohio State really helped me prepare. Um, I had professors who believed in me. Um, also, my church family here, uh, support ministries under Pastor Carter was also um, huge encouragement. Um, and so I think for me, when I look at the professors that I had, many of them took me under their wing. And so I had great mentors along the way. Wow. And I think mentoring is something that's pretty important to the both of you. Would you like to talk to us about your philosophy on mentoring? Well, I think that uh, mentoring comes from the very roots of my life, the very soil of which I grew from, that uh, I had help from, from Almighty God through the people, the communities, and they saw something that... Uh, uh, it was a spark that they say this is worth is flaming and helping others mm -hmm. from that spark. Most definitely, because because it sounds like you know they definitely saw something in you, and yeah. so we, you wouldn't have been be who you are today without those mentors right. around you. Right. Right. Yes. How about right. you? Well, I also add just one uh, little thing with. In that regard, for Dr. Weddington, in the book, we talk about a white doctor that also inspired him, uh, Dr. George Ragsdale. Mm. And so he let Dr. Weddington carry his medicine bag when he would come to take care of his grandmother, Viola, who was a midwife also at the time in Hiram. And so Dr. Weddington, looking at Dr. Ragsdale, as we, met, we mentioned in the book, um, great difference in age, of course, and the race factor, but he determined just from that one one small gesture of carrying that medicine bag that he would be a doctor and that was one of the way one of the early ways that he got his inspiration just from having the doctor come take care of his family right and the book that you're referring to is uh, we've got it here it's Salt called of the, the earth, earth. Georgia, Georgia boy, boy. Georgia boy. Well, Georgia boy turned <laughs> Buckeye now. <laughs> right, right. We're so so happy to have you as uh, have have you as being part of our community for so so very long. Um, the book was really interesting in that you weave you wove in the story of his life um, along with you know some other accomplishments, but we really got to know you, Dr. Weddington, as a person from these personal stories. How did the process of writing the book come about? Well, we met in 2006, <laughs> which seems okay. like so long ago <laughs> now. And you, yeah. <laughs> so, this, so the book is probably a real labor of love. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, we met through uh, Senator Miller's Honoring Our Elders program that he launched back in 2006. And Dr. Weddington was one of the 12 that uh, Senator Miller selected. And through that, his family asked me to write a book on his life. They really liked the profile that I wrote on Dr. Weddington. And it began from there, just learning, um, uncovering um, a lot of his boxes of pictures and all of his documents. He kept all of his medical books from school. <laughs> oh, wow. So, I mean, it was really you like... a lot of things in this <laughs> what you're going through. Right. <laughs> But just the interview process of learning how he grew up and the time that he grew up just made me more appreciative of the things that I have now, all of us, as a result of doc people like Dr. Weddington coming before us. Now you talk about pictures that you went through, and I think we have some pictures right. also that we have queued up that we can take a look at because that would be interesting to, you know, it's like going back in, going back back in history. Lane. Yeah. Since we're singing memory. songs, back down memory lane. <laughs> oh, now here's, here's a picture. Who is, who is, who is this? That is my mother. Oh, okay. Anna Mae Weddington was more Weddington. Oh, okay. That is her inner, that is my mother in her younger age. She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. And that's my father. Wow. Earl Weddington. And that looks, he looked, fam this person looks familiar. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the captain in the Air Force. <laughs> All right, captain in the Air Force. And, and 
that's part of the uh, Air Force, I believe, uh, yes. pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. From the Air right. Force. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. There you are. Very good. Okay. Looking all dapper. <laughs> in US uniform. All right. And there I am in the, uh, a club that was called the Mama City Lodge. Mama City Lodge, uh, uh, somewhat of a social club for the uh, African American community and uh, part of the Air Force members and other. Uh, people in this in the area. Was that down in Atlanta? Uh, it's outside of Atlanta. Okay. Now about 10 miles from Atlanta. At that time it was about 25 miles from Atlanta. The growth of Atlanta okay. out coming to Portland County was Next part picture. of it. All right. And that's a little drugstore that I uh, uh, owned and developed uh, when I was in in the area of Marietta and uh, Marietta, Georgia. Though. Marietta, Georgia. Because okay. okay. you hadn't come to Ohio yet. <laughs> yeah. So you owned a pharmacy. Well, I own. Lots of things. We own. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're right. brilliant right. about it. And uh, speaking of mentoring, what that's tell us about part that? of a, a, a group that uh, the uh, Ohio. Academy of Future Physicians, I believe it was. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. All right. Wow. Thank well, you that, for that. Yeah. Walk that, down, that, 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 not that. only memory lane, <laughs> but you know what you were doing uh, as as a professor at at Ohio State University. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let me ask you this because uh, and we have a little bit of time, but what do you hope to, to leave as, as your legacy? I mean, you know, for, for this question for both of you, mm -hmm. um, but but with you first, Dr. Wellington, um, what do you see as your legacy? Uh, here, here in Columbus and, and in Atlanta. I think my legacy would be that uh, I've always had uh, the, in my background and my life, my whole life was that of being able to associate and help people mm -hmm. that were in need. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born and reared in an area where need was very important. And part of my background was my grandmother was a midwife. She delivered uh, many babies in rural Georgia, black and white, in which uh, she was, uh, when people were unable to pay the fees for doctors, uh, and she worked as a midwife delivering babies and, and working uh, with people in the county that needed help. And I remember from the very beginning that my grandmother was always available to help many people that were in need. Christmas time, uh, they call on Val and many people because of her race. And uh, she was a person that provided many helpful suggestions and procedures that helped with, with the community. Mm -hmm. Wow, I mean that's that is, that is that's I mean it's, it sounds like it's it's, just, it's in your blood, you know, yeah, to be of service to help, <laughs> yeah. you know. That's, that's that's definitely what it is. And, and how about yourself? Well, I'm still working on mine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, well, so far, you, you know, you you're, you're put together this book in, in collaboration, right. so that's that's a great right. start. And the columns that you write. Well, you know, there's a quick thing that I want to focus on. Um, when we were talking in the green room. You, we were talking about, you know, have you arrived because, you know, you're an accomplished, uh, you have a Ph.D., you write columns around the country, and you really have your pulse on the community when it comes to um, activism and civil rights and, and, and education. Um, but what did you want to say about, you know, have you arrived? <laughs> well, I think I'm still getting there, to be honest. But um, with my work as a writer, uh, writing this book with Dr. Weddington uh, definitely was a blessing in learning. With my columns, as I was uh, telling you in previous conversation, I think of myself as an educator at heart. 
And so I hope that people learn from reading my work. Uh, I don't like to have like a condescending voice, but one that's more conversational. So whatever I'm writing about, whether it's education, history, pop culture, that they can see um, my logical way of thinking, but also learn a process about ourselves, learn what, how do we, how we as a society is what I hope to really, I think, work on and leave as a legacy as a writer. That's amazing. You are just phenomenal. It is such a joy to have both of you on the show. And for our viewing audience, what we'd really like to make sure you get out of this is to, to contribute to the lives of some young person. Most definitely. And also make sure that you read Salt of the Earth, Georgia, Georgia Boy. Boy. <laughs> and great, 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 That's right. uh, great and read. And speaking of young people, we've got a kid caught in the act of doing something good. If you'd like to cue up that picture for us. We'll get that. And, and once again, thank you to, to both of you for being thank on the show. We, we look forward to more books. Thank you yes. very much. All right. So we got a kid caught in the act. We, we talked about this. And, you know, we've done this before. A kid caught in the act of doing, doing something, something good. good. So often we don't yeah. get to see those great things that our young people mm -hmm. are doing. You know, so we want to make sure that we do our part in making sure we get to see and the viewing audience gets to see mm -hmm. some kids doing something great. And also, if, if, you're, if you're viewing the show and you've got a young person, you see a young person doing something great, take a picture, send them the picture, okay. you know, to talk about what they did and so that we can get this so we can spread the word about kids doing great things in our community. So getting, getting queued up, our kid caught in the act of doing something good, <clears throat> that is Kyle Barrett. He's a freshman at Beechcroft High School where he plays football and basketball. Kyle was recently awarded Cougar of the Year for 2014 basketball season and awarded the Scholar Athlete Award for excelling academically in winter athletics. Kyle also is part of a community organization called Men of Acts Ministries where Kyle performs community service. Kyle wants to attend a Division I college, play football, become a doctor or a firefighter. He also has aspirations of playing in the NFL, but understands that he has to have something to fall back on. Kyle Barrett, <clears throat> you know, wants to be a doctor also, so we might have to get, right. get him hooked get up with, with, with you two. <laughs> Congratulations, Kyle. What a great job. Keep up the good work, and you'll keep going on to inspire many other young people. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be right back after these words.